to start this session, I'd like to give everyone kind of an overview of the history of rectal displacement technology um, in radiation therapy arena. And as I do that, I will highlight some of the problems that some of the, the different products have had over the years and kind of touch on some of the newer products. So let's start off with one of the first products that at least I came in contact with, which was uh, what's called a rectal balloon. Uh, this is a dose volume histogram, and it's looking at three different types of rectal balloons and comparing it to a case without a rectal balloon. And what a rectal balloon is, is just a device that's inserted in the rectum, uh, blown up with either water or air, and basically enlarges uh, the circumference of the rectum. So what does that do and how does that help uh, with your, your radiation therapy? But what this slide shows is that in this particular study in the Red Journal, um, the cases uh, you could see down and all lumped together, but the one dose volume histogram, the way you can kind of look at that, look at any dose on the x-axis and just kind of draw a line up. And you can see for a given dose, the percentage of the inner rectal wall that's taken. And so for the case with no uh, rectal balloon, um, that has uh, basically uh, the highest amount of the rectal tissue uh, covered by the prescription dose. And with the various rectal balloons uh, for any given dose, you're treating a, a smaller percentage of the rectal balloon. So wh why is that? How does the rectal balloon do that? So here's an example of what it looks like. Uh, a is a uh, prostate transverse image with a rectal balloon. And B is an, an image without a rectal balloon. So the, the black inside the rectum is enlarging this. And I found this kind of really thinking about that theoretically it made a lot of sense because this is how uh, at least I treat my prostate cancer with my bladder. I fill my bladder. And the more I can fill it, the more that the radiation centered around the prostate treats less and less percentage-wise of the bladder, right? So if you have a collapsed bladder on top of your prostate and then you're radiating the prostate, you may treat uh, almost all the bladder in your high-dose region. So this is the same concept. So the concept was, we would, you know, the balloon would increase the uh, circumference and it would push really the more posterior aspects out of it by inflating it outside of the radiation field. And that does work. So now there is this, there is some issues with this in terms of this has to be placed into the patient at the time of treatment, and then the balloon has to be blown up. But you can see just by A compared to B that you're treating a lot less of the posterior part of the rectum. And this is a dose volume histogram for uh, A, uh, something with a rectal balloon, and uh, B, without a rectal balloon. And you can see for any given dose, uh, when you had the rectal balloon, you, you got uh, less radiation dose to the rectum. Here's just another slide showing uh, how that you can have that distribution without the rectal balloon and with the rectal balloon and comparing it to the prostate. You can see the rectum on the side. But the pitfall of this particular approach is by doing this, what you end up doing is that you, you are basically taking the posterior part of the, uh, of the rectum, pushing it away, but you're actually pushing the anterior part into the higher dose region. So uh, this is actually something when we treat our patients on a daily basis, we like to treat them with a completely negative rectum so that we're taking the rectum and pulling it away from the prostate. So this is expanding it to agree that's good, but the downside is that it does take the anterior portion and push it higher to get the higher dose. Um, so that's some of the pitfalls of that technology, although it's still being used. The next kind of technology that kind of came into being is using this uh, uh, absorbable hydrogel spacer, um, uh, which is now called Spacer uh, in the commercial product. And this is a study using it in men undergoing prostate radiotherapy, 12 months toxicity, and some proctoscopy results. And it was in a phase two trial. And you can see the picture here of uh, the red being the prescription dose covering the prostate uh, and the rectum below. And you can see that the red on A is covering a small anterior portion of the rectum. And then the lower dose blue is covering almost 50% of the, of the rectum. Now you put this spacer in, 
And you can see it displaces the prostate away from the rectum so that that high dose red region isn't even touching the, pro the rectum at all. And the blue, the lower dose, uh, just really skims the surface. So here you could really clearly see in this kind of diagram how that space sort of reduce rectal dose. And this slide just looks at various, uh, the Vienna proctoscopy scores that look at changes in the rectum and kind of comparing it, the space or uh, to uh, a, a literature match control group. And you can see here that there's much less uh, overall uh, rec uh, Vienna score. The scores are lower in the space or product. With the space or product, there's less telangiectasias, which is caused by radiation and less evidence on this could be of congested mucosa. <clears throat> and this is just a trial that compares two different rectal spacers in prostate cancer, external beam radiation therapy in terms of rectal spa sparing and volume consistency, um, and just showing you two, two types of things, a balloon uh, uh, versus a uh, kind of a hydrogel spacer. And you can see from, from that group, although they all do some, uh, it's obviously that the control group, the black, has the highest dose to the rectum compared to the other spacer techniques. Uh, this is another uh, type of uh, product, which is the injection of hyaluronic acid. Again, the commercial uh, version of that available now uh, over the last year or so is the Baragel, and it's in injecting this into the uh, anterior perirectal fat to increase rectal to uh, decrease rectal toxicity from radiation given via IMRT. And just looking at the diagrams, you can see um, the diagram on your left. You'll see the symphysis pubis, the bladder, prostate, and the rectum. And then on the right, you can see uh, on an MRI, uh, you can see that white which is clearly just providing like a pillow of separation. And clearly when you're radiating the prostate, you are going to reduce the dose to the rectum. So this is, uh, this is a uh, drawing so using the space or uh, the hydrogel. I'll just go through a little bit how you do this. So first, the, the diagrams make this look pretty easy, but I recommend anyone who, I'm sure a lot of people are using it, but um, if you're just starting to use it, uh, this is not really a very intuitive procedure, although sometimes the reps say it is, and you really need to study the anatomy and understand what the anatomy is when you're about to do this, because you have the prostate there in the picture, and then you have the rectum and have your ultrasound probe. Um, but so they have Denavier's fascia, which is a fascia lying right underneath the prostate. It's typically images as white. And then really you have the the surface, uh, the serosa of the rectum, also imaging is white. And when those things are together, especially when you have a probe, in, they look like one line. They don't look like two. So the key is how do you get to in between those two lines? Um, and especially the more water you put in your ultrasound probe, the more you push it up against the prostate, you are collapsing those two white lines together making it more difficult to identify. So one of the ways you do this when you want to find this out is that you're going to have to initially have some water in your pathway, but you're going to bring the probe very slowly by decreasing the water away from the prostate. And that is going to enable to the white lines to open, especially they tend to open up right at the area of the prostate seminal vesicle junction, where you can really say, okay, that's the space that I need to get my needle into. And the way this is done with space or is that you're first you're using the needle, you're gliding it in at an angle, um, and you're trying to get it into that space. Usually when you get it in there, it kind of slides in. And to prove that you're in the space, you're going to use um, saline or hydro dissect that space, but just giving it a little water and you'll see that space open. When you know that space opens and it opens very easily, you know you're in the right spot. And once you're in the right spot, um, you can switch out the, uh, the space or has two syringes, which inject materials that come together. And as they come together, they form the gel in the space. They kind of spread out between the area and form like a, a consistency of a, of a gummy bear that's in that space. Uh, and it stays for about four to six months. Here's just a picture of what it looks like. Um, and this is uh, one of the multi-institutional trials looking at how this... Uh, Hydrogel reduces uh, rectal doses um, and some of the outcomes. Here's a picture from that. So 
you have on your left a picture of the prostate and the rectum before the space sore, and two is uh, after the space sore. You can see we, we labeled space sore, but really that's what it does. It really creates that buffer. It's all about the space, trying to get it central, try to get it in such a way that it's pushing the prostate off the rectum. And then by six months, that, that will dissolve, and you'll get an image like you have on the right. Uh, this has been another uh, uh, product that's been uh, in, in the market and discussed and tested and still ongoing, which is using a uh, biodegradable balloon. It's the same concept of kind of putting this uh, deflated balloon that's biodegradable into that space, and when it's in the space, blowing it up to create that same type of buffer. And this is really showing, if you just concentrate on the brown lines, the, uh, the big reduction in dose that you get with uh, this balloon uh, by, again, displacing the prostate away from the rectum. Obviously, the, this does require training, and obviously you wouldn't want to have anything where you're, you're keeping the balloon in there, or you can't retrieve it or get it out afterwards, but it is biodegradable. So this is, a, this is kind of... A, uh, one of those things that also can, is making a big difference, and there are also companies marketing this. So back to the uh, hydrogel or, or the space or This is a prospective multi-center randomized trial, um, looking at the clinical effects of the space or application in men uh, undergoing a prostate image guided IMRT radiation therapy. And if you just kind of look uh, at the graph under there, you can see again this rectal DVH data. Uh, has three groups, space or uh, pre-insertion, space or after the insertion, and a con control group. So you can see the, the one that has the, uh, uh, the control group is receiving the highest dose to the rectum. It doesn't have any spacing. And it's very similar to what it looks like to the space or case before you put the space or in. And once you put the space or in, you're down to that green line. So for the V70, you could see a real marked reduction um, from about 25% of the rectum getting the dose to about 7%. So th these things really do work. This is another phase uh, three trial looking at this uh, absorbable hydrogel spacer. And what this was looking at clinical parameters, and if you just kind of focus on that, you can see that just for rectal plane, uh, the spacer is 2.7%, but the control is all the way up to 11%. Uh, late rectal grade two toxicity, uh, you know, zero versus 5%. So for all these various things, and they're all pretty much significant, uh, you have a reduction in rectal toxicity with using the space or. And the title of this uh, is study is the impact of rectal hydrogel space or on dosimetric toxicity outcomes among patients undergoing combination therapy with external beam and low dose rate brachytherapy. So at Mount Sinai, we uh, began to use a, a regimen where we put a space or in on patients, then gave five SBRT treatments followed by a palladium 103 low dose rate brachytherapy implant. We had a, uh, we used for this study a total of 168 patients, 22 had received the hydrogel spacer and the other patients were the control group. Um, and so the, this was some of the results. This is what it looks like here, uh, where we're doing the implant uh, on the patient. And the spacer is that black, you see anterior to the rectum. And then when we looked at the various dosimetric factors, the key thing in this small group of patients that made a difference uh, was the V100 of the, of the rectum. That is the prescription dose covering the rectum. And that was markedly different in the patients that got space or versus those, the control group that did not. That was the one that had a p-value of 0.039. The, the dose uh, to the prostate from the implant didn't really change. The ability to do it didn't really change, but it did save uh, the rectum from the high-dose regions. And this is another paper, a uh, pro uh, prospective analysis of hydrogel spacer for prostate cancer patients undergoing radiotherapy. Uh, published in Urologic Oncology, just looked at 76 patients uh, undergoing uh, a space or placement um, 
prior to, to external beam radiation therapy. It's showing a diagram, figure one, of what it looks like. The blue is the space or You can see, again, it moves the high-dose region away from the rectum. Uh, and they showed that in their dosimetric outcomes uh, as well, uh, is that a marked reduction in rectal dose. And this is just another uh, paper by the Memorial Group, a placement of an absorbable rectal hydrogel spacer in patients undergoing um, low-dose rate brachytherapy with palladium-103. Uh, they found very similar outcomes. Here's a picture of the prostate with the spacer in place. And again, what they found was a decrease in some of the parameters, uh, such as uh, rectal bleeding and proctitis. Uh, obviously, the patients that had the space or did have a little bit more discomfort because they had a foreign body in there. But showing one, it can be done, and, and it will reduce some of the side effects. So I want to end on um, the newer product, um, which is the Barragel, which is hyaluronic acid spacer. For, uh, this is a trial looking at it in hypofractionated radiation therapy. That's 200 centigrade times 30 to 60 gray is a dose regimen. Um, and it was a multi-trial study. And uh, the patients were randomized two to one to get the, the uh, Barragel versus not. And the primary outcomes were looking at the, the V54 uh, treated to the rectum. So the dose of 54 gray, how much of it covers the rectum in the patients that got the Barragel versus those that did not. Um, and here's just a picture. Here's the prostate and a transverse cut. Um, and then there's that Barragel. And uh, we're going to have some... Uh, demonstrations showing everyone how to use all these different products. Uh, the Barragel can be placed, uh, you can put multiple uh, needles in, you can we use three vials to get the Barragel where you want it to be. And you can see uh, on the diagram and right, it can, it can really have a nice buffer between the prostate and the rectum. Um, this trial just looks at the various dose parameters, uh, and you can see that if you're looking at the absolute uh, uh, decline from baseline, right, with the use of the Barragel, you'll see that for all the dose parameters is about 6, 7, 8 percent, 9 percent, 10 percent, 12 percent reduction in, in the rectal dose parameters when, when you're using the Barragel. And in terms of the gastrointestinal uh, toxicity differences, um, uh, there was for grade one, there was about 12% in the space around versus 30%, a little higher, significantly higher for grade one toxicity. Um, and for grade two, it was 2% versus three, 13, 14%. So it did translate in those particular parameters. And it just makes 100% se sense that you're putting this stuff in there. Uh, you're getting much less dose. And of course, you're going to get much less uh, both acute and long-term toxicities. So I think that's it. I think we have some other talks. I'm going to discuss some of this a little bit further, but I felt that was just a good background so you know where, where we've come from in terms of rectal spacing. Thank you.